and we're gonna say that we buy four of those and so there is that and then we're also going to buy an uh an epsp which is the epiphone standard pro and we're going to say we buy five of those and they cost 480 for 2400 so that's going to be our inventory that we're starting to purchase here uh if we needed more lines we can add more lines here we've got the postal address which is is picking up our address by default uh, if you wanted a different address you can hit the drop down and add an address or uh, you can pick a different address uh, and you can adjust your settings if you have a different address that it's going to be going to uh, attention telephone number delivery instructions and you can add notes on down below now if you, you've got your approval option you can approve and add another uh, and you can cancel it now, as I add this, it's not gonna, it's not gonna actually uh, do anything in terms of the financial statements because this is a form that's gonna be going to our, our vendor, but we didn't actually pay for anything and we don't have any claim to the inventory yet. So although we're gonna track this, there's no impact on the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement. We will possibly use this form, however, when we receive the inventory to create the applicable bill, at which point we will then record the transaction and the inventory. So let's approve it. Once approved, we have our sending option here and we've got our printing option and we have the options drop down uh, to edit, delete uh, and copy to. The copy to would be copying it most likely to a bill once we receive the items. We've got our little crumb trail up top so we can go into the purchase orders again and uh, see the activity here. Hold on, I went to the drop down and then uh, purchase orders. Okay, so there's our activity. So here's here's the everything related to the purchase order. It's not a draft, it's not awaiting approval, it's been approved. So it's in the approved area. We have not used it to uh, yet generate a bill, which is something we hope to happen once we receive the, 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 the guitars. Now, again, nothing happened up top in terms of the balance sheet or the income statement for the purchase order. Now you can also look at this, in, if I go to my contacts and we're looking at uh, Epiphone, if I go to my supplier's contacts and check out Epiphone and go into uh, the Epiphone information, then we can also go here for and, and check it out our purchase order information. All right, let's make another one. Let's do this time by just hitting the plus button up top and I'm gonna say purchase order. I'd like to order a purchase. I'm ordering this purchase, dang it. This is, let's say this is Gibson. We don't have Gibson set up yet, so Gibson USA. I'm gonna add a new contact for Gibson. This is gonna be for 01 slash 12 slash 23. And we're gonna say there's the number, standard theme, dollars. It's not gonna have any tax on it. So I'm gonna say no tax. And then I'm gonna be selecting our items. All right, so I'm gonna start off trying to buy a new one as we go. This is another, a new vendor. So we're gonna say, let's, let's type in, an, or I'm just gonna add it as we go. We're gonna add a new product on the fly as we go. And I'm gonna call it a, I'm gonna call it a GSB for the code. And then the item name I'm gonna say is a Gibson SG. And then we're gonna say that we purchase it for, so we're gonna say that we, this is the purchase price, not the sales side. And this is going to be 598. And then we're going to be purchasing it. It's gonna go into inventory, inventory when we purchase it. Uh, inventory, where's my inventory account? Hold on a second. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave that blank. And then the tax rate on the purchase, I'm gonna say there's no tax on the purchase. So I'm gonna exempt the tax on the purchase side. And then I sell this item. So the sales price is gonna be, we're gonna say 777. And then the sales account is just gonna be sales 4,000. And this one is subject to tax. So I'm gonna say that's subject to our sales tax that we set up in a prior presentation at 5%. The description is pulling in on the sales side. So when we purchase in the purchase order, it's gonna show up for this cost 
when we sell it with an invoice or money in form, it's gonna be the sales price up top. And then I have to say that I track this inventory and that's where the inventory asset account is, is coming into play rather than being uh, up here. So we're gonna say it's gonna to go to the uh, inventory asset account. So I'm gonna save it. And then it wants, I think this should be cost of goods sold. It wants cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold account and then the inventory account. Okay, let's try it again. There we have it. All right, so done. So we're gonna buy 10 of them. So I'm gonna say 10 of those have been purchased for 5980. And then it's going to this address. And so that looks good. Let's go ahead and approve it. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna say approve it. And then when that comes through, we're gonna use this to create a bill with it. Uh, once we receive those uh, inventory items, the guitar in this case. So if I hit the drop down, then we can go back to our purchase orders. And now we have our two purchase orders here. And if I go into the approved area, I can check them off. So notice I can check them off and then, uh, and then I can apply an action to them, such as copy them to a bill or, or I can make another purchase order or an invoice with it. And of course we can also track this in the contacts information and the suppliers. And now we've got the Epiphone. Actually, let's just go into the contacts. Uh, let's just go into the contacts, all contacts. And we've got uh, the, there's Gibson. So Gibson USA. If I go into Gibson, then we've got our purchase order there. 